Um, um, I have way too many slides because I have a feeling what you guys would be asking, what questions you guys will be asking if I did not have any. So I'll try to zoom through the slides and leave some time for a discussion. Um, one thing we have noticed in our fleet is that we spend way too much CPU time on things like mAdvice don't need and mAdvice free. And the CPU time is not in the mAdvice code itself, but it's in the TLB flushes. In the calling thread, about half of the CPU time is spent just flushing the TLB and waiting for other CPUs to flush their TLBs. And once you add in the amount of time the other CPUs spend flushing their TLBs, almost all the time spent in mAdvice don't need or mAdvice free is just spent doing TLB flushes. And this is on systems with a modest number of CPUs. New systems have more CPUs and we expect things to just get worse over time. But we can draw inspiration from RCU in how, to, how we could solve this problem. RCU deals with overhead by first making data inaccessible. And then once all the users of the data have gone away over time, freeing the data becomes super cheap. And I think we could do a same thing, a similar thing for M advice don't need. Um, I've been talking with the JE Malloc people for a while about what the user space API could look like. And it can be very simple where user space indicates with M advice lazy, pre, lazy free, here's a range of memory uh, that the kernel can free whenever it wants to. And it can call M advice reuse to make a previously M advice free range available for reuse. Um, this basically tells the kernel that it is no longer allowed to throw away any data that's written to that region after M advice reuse uh, has been called. The MAdvice lazy free code itself will look fairly simple. Um, first, we use the, uh, the TLB gen number that we use for um, lazy TLB on x86 nowadays. We probably need to make that uh, architecture independent. And inside the, well, remember that this range is getting uh, lazy freed, so we stored it in a tree somewhere. And then we mark all the PTEs in that range as non present. We could use a swap type like migration, or we could use uh, PT, uh, PTE non, various ways we could do this. And that will keep other CPUs from loading anything in this ad address range into their TLBs. And advice reuse is fairly simple as well. We would simply mark the PTEs as present again and remove the memory range from the tree. And there is no need to do any TLB flushes in M advice reuse either. So when do we need to do flushes? We only need to do the TLB flushes if the memory is being reused for something else. That could either be the virtual memory being reused for something else by the application or having the physical memory reused for something else when we free it and then kernel is free to use it for anything else. But if there is a sufficient time gap between when M advice lazy free is called and when we do the reuse, then some of the TLB, TLB flushes can just happen naturally at context switch time using the lazy TLB code. And we can reduce the number of IPIs that we have to send to other CPUs. And the context switching code, um, what the lazy TLB code does today, it checks whether the CPU's uh, TLB generation number is smaller than the TLB generation for the MM. And if the CPU is behind, then we just flush the TLB. On x86, we do this today for the lazy TLB code. Um, and this basically expands lazy TLB code to user space for M advice, lazy for you, and we might be able to use it for other things as well. At reclaim time, um, this is where we have to check as well um, who still has the, might have the TLB loaded for this page. So if we 
uh, every claim time, we look at a page, we clear the page table entry, and then we have to iterate over the CPUs that have this uh, MM loaded. It's the MM CPU mask on x86. I don't know what it's called on other architectures. Um, at that point, we need to check if this CPU is still holding an older uh, TLB gen than what is associated with this MM device lazy free area. We need to send the TLB flush IPI. But if the CPU has already done the TLB flush by itself during a context switch, then we have to do absolutely nothing before we can free the page. And this is where I think we could save a lot of the overhead of TLB flushes. Um, there's some optimizations we can do here. One of the things I have code for right now is keeping a small buffer of flushed address ranges. Um, and at context switch time, if we have a few small flushes pending, we can just catch up with those instead of doing full flushes. Um, I tried this out with a web proxy workload um, without any M advice three in there. And I saw about a one to 2% improvement in instructions per clock, but it only helps right now um, when a system has sufficient idle time, about 50% idle. That's when this code seems to have the sweet spot. So I didn't send this in yet since it doesn't do anything when the system is busy. But I think with M advice lazy free, this might be worthwhile. We might be able to use this kind of thing for M and map and maybe a few other things as well. Maybe we can also use it uh, to solve the problem that Jungchul Park is working on with the lazy unmap flush. Some things we might be able to, to use some of this code for. Um, and the lifetime rules for M advice lazy free. Um, we start on the upper left corner where we have a valid page table entry. If lazy free gets called, we mark the PTE as non-present, we increment the TLB generation. And then any of the other CPUs at context switch time can check whether their uh, TLB generation is up to date or not. If it is not up to date, we do a flush. At reuse time, um, we don't have to do any TLB flushes, we just mark things as present again. And only at reclaim time, we have to check for CPUs that are not up to date and flush their TLBs. And I guess this slide is what I should leave uh, up during the discussion. Does anybody have questions or comments? He doesn't like it. <laughs> well, so my, th I mean, my thinking is like, can't you do something like an access bit? You clear the access bit, you still keep it there, and then later you can come and look and see if that access bit is clear or not to decide whether or not, um, whether you can reclaim it or not. The, just that the is reuse kind of MFI3. MFI3 does, does that. that. However, it does, it does mean, mean that, that you need, need to, to catch, catch every, every access. access. That happens, that happens immediately, immediately after you clearly access, access it. it. And, and that, that requires, requires you to send an immediate TLB, TLB flush. flush. And that's the thing we want to avoid since most of the overhead is in the TLB flushes. Yeah, okay. I don't, yeah, the, the reuse, the, re, the need to do that reuse call just seems a bit cumbersome. That's all. From that. It, it, it does, does, it is cumbersome. But I think that most applications will never see it because this is the kind of stuff that will be done by the malloc library or the runtime. So you see it in a J malloc and a TC malloc, and yeah, you might, might see it inside, inside a JVM, JVM, something like that. But it's not something that most applications will ever have to deal with themselves. They just, just call malloc and, malloc and free, and the library does all this stuff for them in the background. Um, hi, thanks for the uh, presentation. I was just wondering uh, if you had seen code that was previously posted to the mailing list several years ago that was trying to solve a similar problem. 
uh, using a vectorized version of mAdvise to reduce the number of IPIs that are generated for uh, clearing, for uh, using mAdvise v, you know, using don't need on a, on a vector of uh, ranges as opposed to just a single range. Um, we use a version of that patch. Um, so I, I work at a company called Fastly, and uh, we use a version of that patch that I ported to uh, a recent uh, like 6.1 and 6.6 uh, with some modifications so that we can do a fewer number of TLB flushes, but for uh, a greater number of ranges, uh, hence the question around the vectorized uh, MAdvise V. And I was wondering if you, A, if you, if you saw that old patch set from many years ago, and uh, B, if there is a plan uh, for lazy free to be vectorized so that you could unmap a large number of different regions uh, simultaneously um, if needed. Um, I, I did, did see, see the, the vectorized patch. patch. I don't remember why it never got merged upstream. I assume there are reasons for it, but I don't remember what it is right now. And I don't know if we need to factorize this or not, because if we cut the overhead by 80 or 90% and the flushes are done asynchronously, then I think we get most of the benefits without having vectorizing in this particular call itself. Because the once you flush the TLB, if you if your application does a number of these M advice lazy free calls in a row, say, say 10 of them or 20 of them. And afterwards, we do the TLB flushes. We'll still do only one flush to catch up uh, a CPU with all of those M advice lazy free calls. So you kind of get that batching for free without needing to explicitly uh, vectorize it in user space. Hi, Rick. Uh, this is David. Cool, cool stuff. Um, one question, is, is it relevant for your use case that during a reuse you get the same page with the same content as you would have had previously before you did a no, lazy No, that part free? really, does, that that part part really doesn't, doesn't matter. The application does not, at, that, at the time we call reuse, um, the application, the, the memory might no longer be there. It might already have been reclaimed. The main what thing I was that wondering is to make sure that. Go ahead. What I was wondering is if there would be a way that we do an M advice lazy free, we mark the PT in a way we move the page into a per process buffer list whatsoever. And whenever you want to reuse memory, uh, we would simply take a page from the list, but we would just take any any one, and if there's none, we would allocate one. Meaning that, like, it would be possible not to only get rid of, in the process of the TLB flush that you can defer, but also of repeated page zeroing. Like, you, you have some kind of a buffer when you when you move pages and allocate them that that you can just reuse them like anywhere in your process if you have to reallocate with the semantics that you don't need zeroed out memory. I think that's, that's a really, really good, good idea. idea. It, it solves so an issue that some of the malloc library developers have been looking at, where programs uh, free memory in a fra very fragmented way, and then malloc ends up allocating from a different er virtual uh, arena and being able to just re recycle these pages without zeroing in between is a real could really help that. that rely on the semantics of getting zeroed memory from the uh, uh, MMAP? Um, there are uh, applications, applications that, that rely, rely on, on MFIs, MFIs don't need returning zeroed memory. But in this case, I think we are looking at using it mostly through a malloc library where the application calls malloc and free and the application does not know whether malloc will give it memory that was previously zeroed or not. Point, thank you. Unfortunately, the time is up. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Thank you.